Okay, so here we are back at Bristol. Uh, we are running at 4K with frame generation enabled, but we're not running any sort of DLSS upscaling. Um, so look over to the right-hand side of the screen. You'll see there's a frame counter over there showing like 47, 48-ish frames per second. That is built into the simulator. So the simulator is showing us those frames. However, the sim cannot count the frames that are added through frame generation. However, over to sort of the left-ish side of the screen, you'll see that the frame rate is considerably higher into the 90s because um, the system that's capturing those frames can capture the frame generated frames. So you can see basically it's doubling up whatever the sim gives us like in the 40s and then doubles it into the 90s which is really nice. On a game like Flight Sim I kind of think you can get away with it because I mean look there's not a lot going on very very slow movement but again that smoothness does add to the kind of immersion factor so I do think it's quite important in Flight Sim. Now we're landing into Bristol on the Pilot Plus um, scenery. So it's a custom scenery um, for Bristol Airport, which has its own performance impact. We're flying in the Phoenix Airbus A320, which is a third party aircraft. Again, quite a heavy hitter in terms of performance. 1, and you'll notice that actually the frames per second that the sim is giving us, those kind of 46, 45, is roughly the same as we were getting uh, last time we did this test with the 3070 installed and the 5800X 3D because we were CPU limited then even at 1080p and now we're at 4K we're still CPU limited by the main thread you can see it says they're limited by main thread so really um, the 4080 has allowed us to go to 4K and still maintain that 40 FPS that we had before whereas of course we're only at 1080p before with the 3070 so there's a benefit there we've gone from 1080p to 4K with no loss of performance but now we can switch on frame gen and you can see we're like well into the 90s. I know they're fake frames in some cases, but I do think um, I do think it's okay in flight sim. I, I know frame gen kind of is quite a controversial subject. Some people love it, some people hate it. Like I've said before, I think if you're in a competitive shooter, absolutely not. Do not turn it on. Um, but if you're in a story-based game where you just want the nicest visuals with the smoothest feel fine or in a game like this where there's I mean look there's hardly any movement going on everything's moving past very very slowly but it is lovely and smooth and that is the main thing let's just keep an eye on those FPS numbers now as we're coming into land because this is generally where it will start to fall apart if it's going to you sometimes get the occasional stutter as you come into land I'm gonna have to 100. grab the throttles and just bring them into idle in a second the plane 20, is gonna do an auto land 40, 30, 20. Down you go. Five. Boff. Look at that. Well, there's <laughs> literally as I said that, there's a stutter. But that is the nature of the sim, unfortunately. You're always gonna get the odd stutter, unfortunately. Frame gen on, frame gen off, seventy eight hundred X three D. Fifty eight hundred X three D. The sim does like to just occasionally just go uh, for like half a second and as you can see the 0.1% low reflects that but other than that I would say that is a very good experience um, and a pretty good result for the sim you, you're gonna get moments like that regardless of your hardware okay back in the PMDG 737 at Gatwick and again similar story what are we at 46 47 48 49 coming out of the sim that is and then Frame gen is doubling it up roughly to get us sort of in the high 90s, which is very nice indeed. Very nice indeed. Like I was saying um, a few minutes ago, unsure once I lock it to 60 FPS how that's going to work because I'm going to do it. I'm on a 60 Hertz TV, doesn't have variable refresh rate, so I'm going to enable VSync just for the Microsoft Flight Simulator within the NVIDIA control panel. Leave VSync off inside the settings of the sim. That's apparently the way to do it and then enable frame generation. So look here, say we're getting like 48 FPS. In that instance, will frame gen then add on 12 to get us to 60? Or will it divide into two to get us to 30 and then double the 30 to 60? I'm unsure, I'm unsure how that's gonna work. So weirdly, I kind of feel like uh, we've been talking about CPU bottlenecks, GPU bottlenecks in a weird way. Now my TV is the bottleneck, so. Yeah, we'll have to see on that one. Let me know in the comments if you've got any idea how it works um, with regard to the frames and the V-Sync and the stuff. I'd be interested to learn a bit more about that. Struggling to get a clear answer. I did briefly turn it on the other day. 1, 
in that configuration and the sim like top right there was reporting like 45 ish for example and then the msi afterburner that's showing the 90 fps now was showing 60 so i guess that would imply that the frame gen is simply topping you up to 60 rather than dropping you to 30 and then doubling the 30 to make 60 i don't know i don't know it could be misleading data of course it might be doing something different than what it appears to be doing but in any case again like i would be starting to worry at this point i'm like oh no 38 39 fps we're starting to dip down but frame gen is keeping us in the 80s which is really nice and it feels like 80 it doesn't feel like 30 frame gen definitely gives you that feel of it being higher it is a very good technology for flight sim i do stand by that again wouldn't turn it on in call of duty or counter strike not in a month of sundays but when it comes to flight sim, when it comes to story driven games where you just want a nice smooth experience and you're not worried about twitchy reflexes to like try and get a headshot or whatever nice landing autopilot puts us to shame doesn't it really reverses on there we go yeah I mean that didn't miss a beat there, did it? That was perfect. At the flightsim.to version of Gatwick, which is known to be a bit of a monster in its own right. So we're back at LAX in the Phoenix A320, and as you can see, quite similar to Bristol, we are around the 90 FPS once you factor in the frame generation. If you look over to the right-hand side, you can see that the sim is actually generating sort of mid-40s, which for LA is pretty good. The airport is the default LAX airport but it is still quite demanding and of course so is the overall area of LA and you can see that frame gen is kind of just basically doubling up for us giving us that nice smooth uh, performance that we're getting there looking at the GPU memory uh, of course now we're on a 4080 we've got 16 gigs of uh, VRAM and you can see that it's using about 9.49 so comfortably beneath the limit but it just goes to show doesn't it that even with a 4080 installed if you don't enable frame gen you're still going to be getting the same sort of mid to low 40s that we were last time when we had the 3070 installed um, all the 4080 really has afforded us to do is to go to 4k without being gpu bottlenecked where obviously if we tried to go to 4k with the 3070 i think it would all be over pretty quickly but the next thing it adds is the ability to add on frame gen to keep you nicely above that 60 fps mark you can see there once you factor in the frame gen we're into the 70s and the 80s nicely above 60 even the one percent lows are at 63 64 they're going down a little bit now now i'm actually talking about them um it may be you still get the odd stutter as we saw in bristol that kind of like momentary kind of half a second hang Again, you could probably spend thousands and thousands and thousands on hardware trying to get rid of that. I think that is a fundamental issue with the software that any amount of hardware isn't going to fix. But for the majority of the time, at least, we're getting a very, very smooth experience here. 500. Well, you can see the closer we get here that the sim itself is actually struggling quite a lot 36 but frame gen is keeping us up in the 70s and it feels good it does feel good so even though we've got quite a low fps figure coming out of the sim that frame gen is definitely keeping things in check here that didn't feel like 30 fps to me Okay, so here we are at Melbourne in the PMTG 737, and Melbourne is a, this is the Orbex version of Melbourne, so it's actually a very, very detailed piece of scenery, so it should give the system a very good workout indeed. And you can see we're around the F 50 FPS mark at the moment, and Frame Gen is doubling us up to around about 100. 
Um, it's funny looking at this. I'm kind of wondering, should I invest in a variable refresh rate TV? Because if I'm going to lock it to 60, I'm leaving frames on the table. But I kind of feel like perhaps a sensible move would be to lock it at 60. And I'll know that basically under all circumstances that we've seen so far, with the exception of that little dip at Bristol, we're going to be above 60. Like, this card at the moment just isn't missing at all. Like, look at this here, like 92, 91, 95, 99. If I was to lock it at 60, the card's just going to be ticking over without much stress at all, which may actually make for a smoother experience than if I were to leave it unlocked and then the sim is constantly chasing frames. If we were just to lock it at 60, it can just be chilled at 60 and we'll get a nice consistent experience. So I think maybe that could be the way to go, even if part of me is like, oh yeah, but a VRR monitor would be awesome. So... I don't know, we'll put a pin in that idea for now. But the closer we get, you can see we're starting to dip down just a small amount there. Like, if we look over to the right, you can see the sim is generating about 43, 44 frames. And again, that's all because we're limited by the main thread on the CPU. And the frame gen is doubling us up nicely. So I kind of think the goal has largely been achieved here. I mean, what was the goal when I set out to do this? I wanted 4K native with frame gen above 60 FPS and it seems to be delivering that I mean even as we get closer now the sim is starting to struggle sort of 34, 35 and we're still doubling up to around 60 or 70 and it definitely feels like a 60 or 70 it, you're not getting that choppiness that you would normally get with uh, with a non-frame gen situation just keeping an eye on it here for any stutters down you go. Yeah, pretty good. So you can see there, as the sim dips beneath, uh, dips beneath 30, obviously the doubling up dips beneath 50, uh, 60, sorry, just a small amount. Let me try and keep us on the center line here while I'm talking. But again, for the most part, for the vast, vast, vast majority of the time, we are above 60 FPS with frame gen at 4K native with TAA. At my uh, preferred settings. Let's go off the next one. Yeah, so I'd say that's uh, mission accomplished, really. That is uh, quite incredible. The next, uh, the next test will be if I can comfortably stream to YouTube and Twitch without my uh, GPU reporting encoder overloading issues, because we've had a few of those issues in the last few live streams. So that'll be the next thing to test out. But yeah, what a difference this has made. What a difference. You know, 1080p on the 3070, we were CPU limited. Obviously 4K is out of the question on a 3070. Go to 4K on the uh, 4080 and it's, yeah, no, no problem at all. Still CPU limited. So we've gone up in resolution and we haven't really gone down in frame rate at all. We've been limited here entirely by the CPU still. And then frame gen doubles us up and gets us into those sort of 70, 80, 90, 100 FPS range, which is really nice. The one thing I remain curious about is how would these numbers look different if we had a 7800X 3D? Because of course I cheaped out. I wanted to keep my motherboard, I wanted to keep my RAM, so I stuck in a 5800X 3D. And, you know, I don't doubt that the 7800X 3D is better, but how much better is it? That's what I'm not sure about but it gets another 10 FPS on average. So would that 67 be, well, like the 33 that The Sims giving us at the moment, would that be like 43? Would it be 53? I don't know. Maybe someday when I'm a big time YouTuber, I'll have pots of money and I can just buy all the things, but <laughs> that's, a, that's a way off yet. That is certainly a way off yet, but you know, never say never. But if you are a member of the community and you do have a 7800X 3D, I know a couple of you do, It'd be interesting to uh, to see what your numbers are like. Very interesting indeed. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you all very much indeed. Hopefully you found this content useful. Uh, leave us a comment if you've got any questions um, about anything at all relating to this. I can always jump back in and run extra tests if, uh, if you feel there's something that you'd like to see that I've missed out. Just let me know. Until next time, take the very best care of yourselves. And as always, happy flying.